famously known for Bulbasaur. Um, and she has voiced so many other lovely characters, so I'll let you take it from here. And I recommend these two mics for us. Should I because, use? Okay. Yeah, I'll so, use this one. Yeah, use this one because it's you wonderful. You can share this, this if one you want. I feel no, so rude. Don't worry about it. Are you kidding me? I have my water. I will put this over here. So the way we're going to do this today is going to be Q&A. So you guys run the floor. Um, and I've seen you guys in the other panel, so you know how it goes. Uh, basically, uh, we're going to have Tara introduce herself and uh, you know say some stuff about herself, and then blah, like, blah, blah, and, yeah, blah blah. blah. And then um, you guys can either line up and speak into the microphone to ask your questions, or ask them for your uh, from your seats, whatever is more most comfortable to you. So there we go. Yeah. Let's that. welcome Tara with a round of applause, no! please. <laughs> Hi guys. Thanks for having me at Game Expo. Yeah. This is all Amina's idea to have this Pokemon reunion. And um, it was really special for us. So we don't get to see each other that often. Um, my name is Tara Sands. And the reason I was invited here is because I'm a voice actress in um, for anime, for games, animation, cartoon, you know, video game. I said that. Commercials, uh, audiobooks. Basically just talk all day. Uh, and I will say whatever you, I am paid to say. Uh, over the years, I've worked on uh, my, my very first anime job was Pokemon, which is crazy. That was 20 years ago. I worked on the first eight seasons uh, and, and a bunch of the movies during that time. During that time, I also got to work on shows like Yu-Gi-Oh! where I played Mokuba. I worked on like Kirby and Ninja Turtles and lots of shows for Central Park Media, and it was really like this crazy boom of anime at that time, uh, and being at 4Kids was, was really, really neat. Uh, in recent years, some of the shows I've worked on are like Hunter x Hunter, um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, One Punch Man, Bungo Stray Dogs, Digimon Adventure Try, Boruto, um, the Fire Emblem games, uh, and stuff I will not remember, like uh, Generator Rex for Cartoon Network. I hosted, uh, around 2005, I was the host of Cartoon Network Fridays. So if you guys were home on Friday nights, I was annoying you on your television. And I was like, watch this, it's amazing, kids. Yeah, that was me. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, so that's my spiel. Happy to t answer any questions I'm able to, or just we can make this very casual and just talk. We could sit in a circle if you want. But let's, oh, let's I, like, not, let's I love kumbayas. Yeah, like, the, I wish we had like a fireplace too, yeah. but that'd be like a fire hazard. But I'm all for it. Probably, it. Yeah. yeah, that probably is, yeah. So yeah, happy to answer questions, do voices, uh, and just hang out with you guys. Thank you for being here. We don't have to do the full hour, don't worry. There's stuff you want to get to. Once we everyone gets through their questions, we can. you're all dismissed. Yeah. Um. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, also, I, I'm going to say this at the end too, but um, she's signing for the rest of the show today, so please yeah. stop by her table, Til say hi. Till 5 or 5.30, I'll yeah. be back at my table, and um, we can talk more there if you're shy here, and signing stuff. So that's it. Does anyone have any questions they can think of yet? Yes! Bulbasaur. <laughs> Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. You, can, is there one that you could do? We could have a conversation. Can you do, anyone do Pikachu or another? Who? So, so yeah. Baba, Baba Shar? Shar, Shar. <laughs> it's just that easy. It is very weird um, that that is the, the one job I will be known for, <laughs> that I said one word. Um, I never, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you guys the story since we're, we have a little time. So it was, I, I had auditioned, I don't even remember the audition for the show, honestly, and I knew nothing about anime at all. Uh, and they're like, hey, can you come in? You got a job on Pokemon. I was like, oh, that's that show that gave those kids in Japan seizures. Because that's the only thing we knew about it. And I knew they would take that out. But um, I showed up. I was playing Melanie in an episode called the Bu uh, Bulbasaur in the Hidden Village. So I was playing Melanie in that, in that episode. I think it's, it's in the first 10 episodes. And they said, hey, while you're here, because uh, they like to get as much out of us as they could. They're like, you see that little like greenish fella down there? Uh, listen to the Japanese and try to sound like that, but say Bulbasaur instead. I'm like, well, what, are, what else does he say? Like, where's, where's this? Because I have a script. They're like, no, he just says Bulbasaur. And I was like, good luck with your show. Um, <laughs> 
right? I never, I, what did I know? Um, so I did it, and he, in Japanese, it was dan, dan, dan. And I said, all right, babasar, baba, babasar. And they're like, oh, great, okay, you'll do that. And again, none of us knew that that was going to be a big character or small, and they're, because I mean, that day too, they were like, oh, and there's something named Oddish, do that. It's like, okay, Oddish, Odd, Odd, Odd. 20 years later, I'm disgusted. Like, it's bananas. Like, think about a thing you did 20 years ago and that someone's, like, bringing it up constantly. It's weird. Um, so I'm very grateful uh, that I happened to be there that day doing that. It just uh, was very fortuitous. Um, super lucky. We had a lot of fun working on it. And I'm so shocked to still be here talking to you guys about it. I think it's been, like, 20 years, right? 20 years, yeah. yeah. Um, because... Uh, Veronica Taylor, my very first day of work, I saw her recording, and I, you know, I was, I had done voiceover, but I had always used, just used my real voice for the most part, because I would do commercials, and I would say things like, <gasps> drink Coke! Um, and I saw, Veronica was pregnant with her daughter, who's 20 now, Yeah. and um, I saw her, this beautiful woman, doing this little boy voice, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a whole other world of, of stuff I could do. And it was so eye-opening and um, inspiring. So, I mean, just very lucky that that was my first day of work. Wow. But, yeah, nuts. Yeah. Do you have any funny fan stories? I mean, kind of whittle it down. What, what's your funniest? A funny fan, fan story? story? I have a good panel story. I was on a panel with a um, great anime actor. It was like a really packed panel. I was like Johnny Young Bosch and... Oh gosh, Leah Clark and Kara Edwards, and we're all at this table. And this guy gets up, and he's waited at a microphone for a while, and he said, "So, um, if you guys were all like to die right now, like in a freak accident or something, we're like we're all like, he's like, who would you want to take your roles?" <laughs> and we were so scared. We we're like. What? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so that was pretty weird. Um, <laughs> the funniest thing that always happens during panel, like I've had some really cool fan experiences, but like the funniest thing that always happens during a panel is without fail, a, there will be a line of people, like this is usually for like a group panel, and they will, you know, people will ask their question, and a little kid will have been waiting on that line the whole time, and they always ask a question that's already been asked every time. And we all look at each other and we're like, Okay, we're gonna just give different answers this time. <laughs> like, you wanna be so sweet. So, like, things like that happen all the time. I'm trying to think if there's any. I, a weird one was someone had me autograph, they had a Bulbasaur tattoo on their leg, and they had me sign under it, and then they tattooed that. And I was like, ooh, that's commitment. <laughs> I don't even want that. So, yeah, I've had some interesting. I mean, the cool thing is, this is all over the world. So,. Yeah. I didn't, you know, when we worked on a little bubble, the last thing I thought is I'd be in New Zealand signing a baby, you know what I mean? Like, or not really, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing how the far reach of it was awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned um, how unusual it was to see a pregnant woman doing the voice of Alice, <laughs> and then you turn around and do the voice of uh, Okuba in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, so how... Well, I just didn't, it just never occurred to me that women were, it was, you know, it was pre, I guess it, Simpsons was the only example, I guess. I, I don't remember if that had even started. Um, I just, it just never occurred to me that that was something I could do. I never even tried it. So as soon as I saw a, a female doing this amazing boy voice, I thought, oh, let me go home and practice that. And uh, luckily I had that in, in my voice range. Because, um, you know, everyone's built, just vocal cords are built differently. So I just, that was, it was luck. And then uh, that sort of became my specialty. But it was that day of the, like, aha moment. That, 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 was, that was kind of an epiphany for you. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I was like, if she could do it, maybe let me try this. And, and it was fun, too, because I got to play Richie opposite her in Pokemon. And um, the biggest challenge was to not sound too much like her because you needed to always be able to differentiate two boys who were very similar, had very similar energy and all that stuff and were the same age, and, but sounded just different enough so that you weren't like, oh wait, who's that? So that's the biggest challenge with a lot of these shows. Um, like I work on, a, on stuff for Barbie 
like I do like Barbie Dreamhouse and Dreamhouse Adventures and all that. And when there's 10 girls in the cast, the biggest challenge is sounding different. Because <laughs> they're all the same age group and no accents and you know. So that's a weird part of voiceover that people forget is a challenge. You know, sometimes you'll be in the booth and be like, no, you sound too much like this character. Can you pitch it down or pitch it up or, or put a little twang in it or make it more nasal? So there's weird hurdles that you just ne don't even, wouldn't occur to you. So do you actually hear each other's lines? Then, uh... It depends. It depends, well, with anime, it depends who happened to record first. So the best is when you're the last one to record because you're actually playing off of off of a, a Amer English dialogue. Because playing off of the Japanese dialogue is different, you know, it's like, I don't know what they're saying. Um, and I haven't picked up any over the 20 years, which is just a shame. <laughs> uh, so yeah, for that, it's like a treat to be the last to record. For new animation, it's always different. A lot of times we're in the booth together, which is, it's just the best gift you can be given because it, your performances are better, you have a better idea of their, of their voices. If I'm alone in the booth, sometimes they'll play me back someone else's to be like, don't sound like that. <laughs> um, like I did a game, I worked on a video game the other day, it's very top secret, uh, and they said, okay, you're in junior high, and I said, well, can I hear some of the other actors because everyone's uh, voice age of junior high is a little different, especially when it's adult, so I said, let me just get in the age zone for that. Uh, for, for, you know, that, those things, and they sounded, you know, they, I understood their version of that. <laughs> it's weird. It's, for recording together is always my preference. I have to uh, give quick shout outs real quick. What? I, I spot some cosplays, which are awesome. Misty Where? in the back. What up, Misty? Yeah, and Ash in the front. What up? Oh, it's Ash Ketchum. Did you see Veronica yesterday? Oh, okay. Well. I can pretend to be her if you want. <laughs> well, well, we'll tell her about you. That's yeah. awesome. You look great. We'll get pictures. Any other questions? Yeah. Another, yeah, sure. Another funny one. Um, how weirded out were you by the culture of the fans at the beginning, and you consistently continue to be weirded out? You know, being a voice actor, I don't have to deal with it much because I'm not ever recognized. I'm not, it's, it's lovely actually. I did not know until a few years ago that when I started coming to conventions, how deep the fandom ran. Because again, we work in a bubble. I knew like my cousins liked the show. I knew, we were very uh, isolated from, from the hardcore fandom of it all. Um, and that's why these conventions have been super fun. I think the weirdest thing is I, at some conventions, uh, like more anime specific shows, I do a Pokemon trivia contest. And I am terrified by how much people know. Like, I literally look at them, I go, did you ever do homework? Like, how, I mean, the most obscure stuff, because some of them I'll be like, no one's gonna get this. I mean, it's crazy. Um, they, they came out with a study recently, uh, some scientists somewhere, they said for people who really grew up with it, there's a region of your brain that is dedicated to that information, the same way there's math and there's, you know, science. Uh, that's crazy pants, but awesome. And how cool that to be, I mean, honestly, I'm just honored to be a, par, a, a small little part of the machine of Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, the, the fans are awesome. They know way too much, but they are awesome. Yeah, I, sh I shared that fact with um, Rachel on yeah. her panel, oh, I, and she didn't know, and crazy. she was shocked, and we all just talked about it for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I credited you for sharing that article, because yeah, like, that's how that I article it, yeah. was crazy. And then, of course, because they said there's a region of your brain, everyone's like, Kanto region, you know, like people, <laughs> the jokes came in. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it was um, part of your kids' routines, and I, I love that. I love that, because that's such an adult thing to have a routine, and for kids, they had that. That was part of their schedule, and was part of their, they would run home from school or whatever it was to watch. That was, that's so cool. I had those, that, those things, so I'm glad I was a part of someone else's. But they are freaky sometimes. <laughs> I'll tell you that what's hard too when they expect me to remember as much as they do. Cause, because again, we never, I mean, I didn't see full scripts. I didn't have time to read a full script. I knew, I went in and sometimes I just said Bulbasaur for an hour. 
<laughs> luckily, I mean, the truth is, luckily, I did. I played ten Pokemon and probably forty other different human characters. So I, I did get to sink my teeth into some other stuff, which is lucky. Um, but yeah, I didn't know what a lot of the, the episodes were about, unfortunately. Yeah. Which other Pokemon? Okay, I'll give you my. Uh, should I? I'll just do. I'll do the show. I'll give you the show. Bobashar. Oddish, odd, odd, oddish. Clefairy, Clefairy, Clefable. Huh. Larvitar, Lar. Oh, I was like, Teddy Ursa, Ursa, Teddy Ursa. Smooch em, smooch. Wormple, Wormple. Who am I forgetting? Oh, there's two more. Uh, fur it. Did I do fur it already? Fur it. I'm missing one. Uh, shoot. I'll figure it out later. Come to my table. So that was, so there were, I think there were That's awesome, that's awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. No, and so, but, thank you. But the truth is, is sometimes we'd be in the booth and they'd be like, like, there's some I don't even know if I played because they'd be like, oh, you're here today. They didn't come in. Can you do, okay. And Rachel was so prolific. Like, Rachel did so many, um, I think she probably filled in for me a lot of the time. They had a weird rule over there, like if your character, if your Pokemon had less than 10 lines or flip flaps or whatever in the episode, they would just pull it from another episode and not pay you for it. So there's episodes that I'm in I didn't work on. It's weird, it was a weird time. I don't know if they get away with that today, but yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Fan beat, thank you. Fampy, fan, fampy. There it is. That's the 10. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Ooh, that would have been stressing me out. We had a question yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, not Pokemon related, but I'm a huge Tails fan, and I just found out you were a genus. Oh, Tails from Symphonia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there like a line maybe that you remember? From I don't remember anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so crazy. And then I. Because I did that, at a, I lived at, there was a, I live in LA now, but there was a time I lived in LA for like six months, like barely any time, and that was one of the things I did, and then I think I moved, and then someone else, I think Colleen O'Shaughnessy ended up doing it. Like, there's so much turnover in all of this, and back then, they wanted you to live in the place. Now they're much more open to you being somewhere else. So that was like a very quick, I mean, I know he sounded something like this, right? Like. What would he say? <laughs> Let's fight? I don't know. What, did he, what would he say? <laughs> I wish I knew. You know what? I, one of my assignments this week is to like find quotes for all for like the majority of my characters that I, so I have like a cheat sheet of things they would say, so that I don't look like a fool just now. Like with this, <laughs> you don't look like a fool at all. <laughs> because you 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 do, you have a lot of credits to your name. You do so much work. Well, I mean, you're able as opposed to being on camera. You're we're able to knock out more jobs in a day. Yeah. And also, we're there for such a short amount of time. Like that Fire Emblem, uh, that three three houses just came out. And I, I looked at the studio that did it, and I was like, well, I worked on a game there, but it was called Blah 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 Seventeen. Why are all my friends in this game? Am I in this game? <laughs> and I, I, I just messaged the director. I was like, hey, did I work on this? And she's like, yeah. Yeah, it was called, the, they have code names for all these games. So yeah, I mean, I had no idea. Because there, it's very secretive. You just basically go down, like, you'll do like battle lines, you'll do like random townspeople lines. It's so non-specific to the gameplay itself, unless you're one of the leads. So, so when I get to be a lead, I, I understand a lot more. But yeah, I had no idea I was in three houses. I mean, no, no clue. Wow. Yeah. And it wasn't my fault. It had a different name. I mean, it, it clearly my check said a different name. My scheduling said a different name. <laughs> yeah. Bulbasaur. No. I gotta always, he asked if I had a favorite Pokemon. Bulbasaur, I love the most. I think he's, I think personality wise, I mean, I love that he's a caretaker. I think he's sweet. I, his voice hurt my throat a lot. So that was the only bummer, I mean, uh, about that. The other, the other ones were much easier on my voice. Like, Clefairy, Clefairy. I could do that all day, and it wouldn't hurt like that. <laughs> so, but I got to go with him as my favorite. Do you have a favorite? My favorite is Piplop. Piplop, good choice. 
I mean, I would go with Bulbasaur since I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I just did 10 voices for you. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pip loves a cutie. Yeah. I can't. I wasn't asked to do the evolutions of Bulbasaur because those voices are so deep that I couldn't do them. So they had other people, luckily, do those voices because I would never have been able to get that deep. I, I, there's a limit. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think I'm versatile, but no, 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 no. But good question. Can you do Ivy Sword? Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyone? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you probably can. Jojo. I want to apologize to everybody for a role I played. Oh, here we go. Okay, there's a show called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Children do not watch, first of all, children don't watch this show. It's just, it's awful. It's a great show. It's a great show. It's just not for children. It's very violent. It's crazy. Um, I played an evil baby who like smoked cigarettes and had fangs and killed people. I, and he was so bad that by the end of the episodes he was in, um, they fed him his own poop. And you were glad. You were like, yeah, eat it, kid. Because <laughs> um, he was so evil. But I was gagging when I recorded it because I have a really bad gag reflex with, with like poop-related things. So I was, and no one warned me that's what was gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, no, like a heads up would have been awesome. Um, so I was in the booth and I had to, I mean, luckily he was like, nyah, 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 like that, but uh, I was literally like looking at the trash can, trying like, okay, that, there it is if I need to, to puke. Um, it was pretty intense. I, and I remember going on Twitter and being like, I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a job. I don't advocate feeding babies poop. Uh, so, yeah, that's how I felt about it. But you know what? The fun part was I also got to play that old lady in those episodes who chases JoJo and wants to, like, be with him. You remember her? She's like, oh, young man, you're so sexy. You like that lady? <laughs> yeah. So that balanced it out because that was super fun. Yeah, JoJo's a crazy. You like your big JoJo fan? That's a crazy show. Wow, yeah, I didn't know. The, the warning, instead of warning me about the poop, they warned me, they said, oh, there'll be a lot of yelling, are you okay with that? I was like, yeah, yeah, yelling's so, okay. uh, I'll book it, because if we have a session where there's a lot of yelling, try to do it like maybe before the weekend or at night where we can rest our voice. No, no news about poop, no, just uh, yelling. Lolly ho! Yeah, yeah, he also has a clown size, as if being an evil baby wasn't bad enough, he also is an evil clown as well. And I, I always wonder, like, because I didn't audition for that, and she just gave it to me, and I thought, why, why, why me? Why did you think of me? <laughs> like, what was the thought process? Baby, evil, c creepy clown, eats his own poop, Tara. <laughs> I should take her to lunch, yeah. Let's speak. I want to just break it, let's break it down. Well, thank you for asking my children, though. I, did, I had fun working on it. Yeah. just wanted to give a little more of the story this morning about your parents. So we were talking this morning about how, like, little... We're, I was with some other actors about how little, like, some of our family knows about what we do. <laughs> so my parents came to one convention. It was, in, it was in New Jersey when they lived there at the time. And... Uh, they were, I mean, they were like, this is so weird. Um, they were enjoying it, but they were sort of like off to the side. And apparently, I didn't see it happen, someone came up to them and said, do you know where Mokuba is signing? And my mom said, I don't think there's someone named Mokuba here. Like, she thought that was a real name. Uh, and she told me later, I go, mom, that's me. That's my character. She sent them away. <laughs> like, not only was she, like, she, not helpful. I was like, you are not invited. That's it. I'm like, either you memorize my list of characters or you're, no, I was fine with it. But it was just so funny. I was like, I get that you don't watch it, but how about just saying, I don't know. Don't say no. 
<laughs> and why did, like, if you saw my parents, they're like two people that should not even be at the convention. So, like, the fact that anyone even asked them for advice is weird. <laughs> like, they're the last two people I would have, like, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Was, thanks, Mom. I love my parents. Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. Has your work ever sparked any interest in the, the works of art that you participate in? Do you ever go, like, watch some movies or... I don't, well, I don't like to watch myself, so I definitely don't do that. Because <laughs> when I watch myself, it's more that I, I th like, I'll watch bits and pieces, but I, I always want to do a better job, and I want to say things, that, I'm like, oh, why did they use that take? I wish I had emphasized that word, or I don't feel like I'm in that. So I don't really watch myself. Um, I will see, like, I went to see Detective Pikachu, because I was curious. Uh, I don't watch anime for fun that much, though, because it does feel like work, unfortunately. So I watch things that are completely different. Like, I watch documentaries and just stuff that doesn't feel like my job. Which is a bummer, because I know there's so much good stuff to watch, and I probably am missing out. Like, um, My Hero Academia, I don't work on at all, so I, I'm tempted to start that. It's yeah. so good. Because I feel like maybe it's distant enough from what I, you know, because I don't work on it that maybe I could try to enjoy it. I highly recommend. Yeah? Yeah, very, very good. I just got into it myself. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the one I would do if I was going to really start. Would you think that's a good idea? I, I don't know them very well, but I mean, I, I can imagine that it's really something that's too, too much like work. It's just not yeah. Work. Or if I have a small enough part in something, I can watch it. Like, I, I worked on a Studio Ghibli film called Only Yesterday. And I got to see that like at a screening, and like if I'm going to a screening of it in the theater, it's a much different experience. And that was great to watch because I did small parts in that, so I wasn't as distracted by my bad performance. Um, and also, it's Studio Ghibli, and it was amazing and cool, and yeah. So things when that happens, I will see it. So, are, do you have any kind of interest at all in, in video games? Or? I'm not good at them. I like video games, I'm just not good at them, and I have an addictive personality, so if I started, I would never stop. Um, and then we wouldn't be hearing you. I, I, my my <laughs> geekiness is word games. Like, I could play Scrabble all day, I do puzzles, like, that's m where my geekiness comes in. I mean, I could, I'm playing a, a version of Angry Birds on my phone now, and I can't, I, have a, I mean, it's a problem. Like, I, I need an intervention. <laughs> it's bad. I've spent money on it. Like, I'm not proud. Um, so I, I get where you guys are all coming from. Like, I have my version of that, but I'm not good at video games. Like, my boyfriend played a million hours of Red Dead Redemption, and I watched some. I was fascinated. I watched it. Like, not all of it. I watched maybe a half hour of it, and I'm fascinated. And I think I get why you guys are so into it. But it's, I'm just, no, I'm no good. Yeah. What did you think of I thought it looked gorgeous. I thought the character design was. I saw it with Veronica. Actually, it was hard. I mean, it was it was hard for us to even get ourselves there in certain ways because we have such a soft. You know, it's personal. Um, but it was different enough that I was able to sit back and enjoy it. I thought uh, Jaden was that his name, the lead. I thought he was great, and I thought the design for Bulbasaur was just gorgeous. Um, I lo and I, lo I, I thought what, what confused me a little bit was that some of them did, because again, I'm more into, the things I was looking for were totally different. I didn't understand why some Pokemon said their own names and some didn't. Like, I would have loved clarification on that. Um, but I, I was able to sit back and watch it as, a, as just a viewer, and it was interesting. It did, there were some moments when we were like, but that's not, but that's not what it, but it, and other, it's a different entity. It's like seeing another Spider-Man or a different Batman. There's, I, I appreciate that there's a different spin on it, and it keeps the interest in it alive. So why, you know, I know there's some actors who are like, no, I, why fix it? It wasn't broken. I'm like, it's just a different interpretation. Like, we don't have to be threatened by it. I'm not threatened, you know. I, I just thought that the design was beautiful, though. I mean, really, not easy, not easy to do what they did. Did you guys like it? Yeah. 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 I was in a I was in a weird audience of. It, we didn't see it right away, so we weren't there with the hardcore fans necessarily. And LA audiences are just kind of jerky sometimes; like they don't want to like anything. So I was in a mixed audience. Like it, some people were really hardcore, and 
And we were just, we wanted to enjoy it. Like, we were there with very open minds, which is the way you had to do it, so. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you catch yourself wanting to do the Bulbasaur? Oh my gosh, of course. I wanted to, like, jump through the screen and be like, he says Bulbasaur, he doesn't squeak. Um, yes, I did. Um, I was, and of course I was bummed, you know, but I understood that it's a new version. But yeah, I would have, I would have loved to be any small part of that. Well, I was just confused because he was one of the few that uh, didn't say his name. Yeah, the concept I kept saying, and I was like, they did such a good job, like, changing him from obviously the enemy. Yeah, he looked amazing. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the, one of the ones who I thought the design was just super phenomenal for. So that made me feel good. Yeah, at least he, at least he looked good. <laughs> Yeah, and I loved, I loved that little thing when he comes back. Yeah, I mean, that was a cheerjerker moment for sure. So I was happy, happy how it worked out. There was one more question yeah. back there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was wondering, do you just like having like merch that like, like, I don't know, if you see like a Bulbasaur or something, I know I want that. Or, like, I have so much, my, I have too much merch at home, <laughs> which is so nice. I mean, the truth is, is people give me stuff all the time, which is, always appreciated and so lovely. I'm overloaded with, bless you, with, with merch. But, but what's fun is there's still stuff that, that surprises me and excites me. Uh, so like, I mean, just walking through Artist Alley, it's just fun to see different artist interpretations of it. But yeah, I have, I, and I found, my, when my parents moved, they're like, uh, this is your box. And it was just a box of different Bulbasaur stuff from, the, from back in the day. I mean, candy and I think, I don't think I have the cereal and I'm bummed about that. I have the can of soda. I have like, I mean, it, there's countless, because, well, there, and then there's merch, there's like legitimate merch and then there's all the knockoff stuff. So like, we have a little Tokyo near where I live. Like, you can walk into every store and find knockoff Bulbasaur stuff, and I could fill a house with it. So I had to, like, put a stop. <laughs> like, you are cut off from buying this merchandise. Um, but what's fun is, like, to see, like, today someone brought me a doll, I don't know if he's here, from uh, an anime I did, I don't I barely remember doing, and I'm like, they made merch for this? So like that's that's really a lot of the fun of these conventions is seeing this obscure stuff that I had no idea existed. Well, there's always more stuff to buy. Yeah. On that note, um, has anybody ever like made you something and brought it to you? Oh yeah. Oh my God, I get the most beautiful. I mean, look, I have something in my bag right now. Like, someone gave me this ornament yesterday. It's really hard to see, but it's wood. It's wood carving. It's like wood burning. I, I don't know the right term for that. Oh, wow. It's gorgeous. Oh, wow. It's like it's really stunning, um, and I have a I have like a a box of where I put all this stuff because I like I can't keep it all out. But I I'm very appreciative. Um, someone crocheted a, like bulbs were like this big for me. I mean, just the lovely uh, children. I mean, it's it's so heartwarming. I hate taking it from them. Like I don't, I'm like you worked on this. You keep it. Um, but I very, I'm very appreciative. It's, again, this is not something I expected. This is not ever why you go into this, <laughs> to get presents. Um, so I, very, very appreciative of, of, especially the stuff that people make. It's just really, it's meaningful. I mean, and, I, and look, the truth is, is I give it, you know, give it up to the Nintendo and Pokemon people. Like, they created uh, something, character designs for these, these creatures that is, endured and lasted. Like, Pokemon's as cute when you're two as when you're 25. He just is, it's a good, Pikachu, he's, or any, like, it's good design, maybe not the nose pass one, but there's, <laughs> or like Mr. Mind, like some of them maybe not, but, but for the most part, a lot of them really just are adorable or tough looking, or there's, there's it's, it is great character design. At the end of the day, that is a, a lot of why this all works. Pikachu is a near perfect design, I'd say. Like, yeah. just really stellar. Aesthetically pleasing yeah. and just memorable. And I would say, like, in certain ways, too, appealing to boys and girls who have different things they navigate towards. So. Yeah, it appeals to both. And I've yeah. never really thought about that. Yeah. Whoever designed Pikachu specifically, I think, is a genius. Genius. We should, yeah. we should invite them next year. Uh, yeah, Amina? I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm up for that task. Yeah. <laughs> now, really talented artists worked on that show. And that's the, you know, that's the bummer of it. Like, I'm here because I did the voice on it, so I can sit here and do that for you guys. But there's just that team of people that did all this work that are not sitting here. And I'd be crazy to think that, that's, that it's all about me. <laughs> not, my ego's not that big. Re of course there it was, a woman that created Pikachu. Kind of like she said, I had a phase where I really liked squirrels, and I really kind of came from that. Oh. Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Huh. That makes sense. It actually does make a lot of sense. And the color's good. Yeah, it's just like, it's a good, yeah. Whatever. Go on all day about that. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Anyone else have questions? Comments? You want to just criticize? I actually me? have a quick question yeah, for yeah. you. And I uh -oh. asked um, Megan and Rachel in the past panels, and I think I want to ask mm. you as well. Uh oh. Um, that's a good question. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, of all the many characters that you've played throughout mm -hmm. the years, which one resonates with you specifically the most? And when I say resonate, I mean comes to mind or yeah. just is really memorable to you. Yeah, I get asked that a lot. It's it's hard. I mean, the truth is, is a lot of these characters have I, my life story is very boring, um, and a lot of these characters have very complicated life stories. What I one of the ones recently, what I, I when I worked on Digimon recently, I what, I didn't have I played Kari, and it's not that I had so much in common with Kari, but the that whole show is about the friendships and about growing up and like, because they said it six years later, which I thought was such a cool move. Um, and about your childhood friends and the, I mean, these are the people you spend the most time with. So I think just from a, a level, it made me miss my friends working on that show. It made me think about my childhood friends. Yeah. And there's something really heartwarming about their, their relationships on that, in that series that definitely affected me. That made me happy to hear because I'm a huge Digimon fan. Oh, you're as well. a Digi yeah, and you I can watched... like both. I'm here to tell you, you can like both <laughs> Digimon and Pokemon. And you, right? You specifically voiced Kari and Digimon Try. Yeah, the later um, series. The later series, and you're right. They go through a lot of mm -hmm. crazy stuff. Well, and you don't know what happened in that six years in between, no. so you get to fill it. I mean, as an actor, no. that's super fun because you get to fill in those blanks of like what went down, down, like what happened with TK. When are they gonna finally? Be? get together, you know? Yeah. Okay, wow. That's, that's good to know. Yeah. And then hopefully we'll all get to work on that last one that's supposed to come out in a few months. I know, yeah, I heard about that. Fingers crossed. I can't wait. That's exciting. I once, I told someone this story earlier. They asked, like, do you ever mess up autographing? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, someone gave me a Digimon DVD to sign, and I wrote, catch them all. <gasps> <laughs> And I was like, I will send you a new one. And he's like, no, this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> so there's one of those out there somewhere. Yeah. That's awesome. I was so, but I get so used to, Catch Em All is m the majority of what I write. Is Catch, catch em, em All. all. He threw me for a loop. <laughs> oh, I felt so stupid. No, that's actually really it was, cool. It was fun. I mean, luckily he was really funny about it, and it, we made it a bit, and it was great. And, but yeah. That's actually, that could be a thing. Like, Maybe now, I'm going to start, start that. Yeah, that's really cool. There's only one. There can only be one. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to find him. Or yeah, her. you'll find that guy. find yeah. that guy. Yeah. No, I, I was very ready to buy him a whole new one. I felt so bad. <laughs> so, yeah. It's so funny. So you, so you get mostly, of course, the Pokemon stuff, and then would you say Yu-Gi-Oh after? Yeah, Pokemon, then Yu-Gi-Oh. It, de it depends on the convention. Like, I, when I go to really hardcore anime conventions, it's like crazy obscure stuff all day sometimes. Okay. Like stuff I don't have any recollect. I got to check to make sure I worked on it. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of that. Uh, yeah, it depends what kind of uh, convention it is. But, but Poke uh, sorry. Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! are the big ones, and then it kind of depends what's trending at that time. Like, if something's just come out, like when Hunter x Hunter was airing, there was a lot of that. You know, when, okay. now it's over, but it's sort of, it just kind of depends on the timing. Okay. And what's on TV. <laughs> you got a question? Yeah, you got Go it. Go ahead. I'm going to eat a bite of this. Are there any other actors that you admire to work on? No. I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, Veronica, obviously. Uh, there's, I mean, there's so many great actors. I, I tell the story. I worked on that show, Generator Rex. I'm sorry if I told this yesterday. But I was in the booth with just legendary 
actors for that, and I was so starstruck. Uh, you know, I just, it was me, Mark Hamill, uh, Gray Griffin, Gray Delisle, whichever name you remember, uh, John DiMaggio, wow. Bender, Troy Baker, Daryl Sbarra, J.K. Simmons was in the booth that day, wow. uh, Hinden Welch, uh, Walsh, Walsh, Welch. I mean, it, it was, it, to, it's one thing to have here, it's another thing to get, be put, I didn't, and I don't know, like I showed up and that's who was there. So that was crazy, uh, but it was like a free class to me. I, I felt like, oh, I would have paid to watch these guys and learn. Only funny thing, I'll tell you an anecdote. <laughs> so now we kind of read our scripts off of iPads for the most part, but for that show, we had paper scripts. And um, you have a lot of downtime, like in between if like, I was working on a scene with Daryl at that point and um, Mark Hamill, who I only really refer to as Luke Skywalker, um, was reading a newspaper, which is fine, but he was moving the pages a little bit. And the director said, hey, Tara, you're, uh, you're shuffling your papers during the scene, can you be more careful? And I was like, yeah, 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 sorry about that. And I'm like, I can't tell on Luke Skywalker. And it keeps <laughs> happening. It's so fine, we get through the scene. Luke Skywalker stops reading his paper at some point, I, or he found a page he liked. And um, I go back like months later for another recording and I run up to them before Mark might get there. And I'm like, you guys, I just want to tell you, I swear I wasn't shuffling my pages. I'm a professional, like it was Luke Skywalker. He was doing it. And they were like, what are you talking? Like they had no recollection of any of it. And I was like, he totally got me in trouble. And luckily they didn't remember, like the stuff that, I mean, I think it's true with any job, the stuff that you hold on to and you're like, oh, everyone's gonna remember this and make fun of me. No one remembers, you remember it, that's it. I mean, now it's a good story because he happens to, to have a lightsaber, but you know, I think it was like a good, it was a learning moment for me to be like, okay, let go of it. No one cares, you got through it. But yeah, he got me in trouble. <laughs> That's a cool story. And I've seen him since, and I, I never bring it up, but part of me wants to be like, dude, dude, I can't do that. I can't do it. That is such a cool story. It's though. a good you story. You can actually say the story. I tell it a lot. I mean, I probably overtold it, but it's a good story. And I don't think he'd mind that I told it. I wouldn't, if, I wouldn't tell it if I thought he would be mad. And also, not many people can tell this story. Like, this is That's so a good point. It's particular, right? It's like, a you very can say Luke specific. Skywalker, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was in awe. I, you know, I don't geek out that much, but that was a, that was a big day for me. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning so much about all of you guys today. So it's like all these like random things. Too much. I know. <laughs> it's good though. That's the good stuff. Do you guys want to get back to the con, or you have any more questions? Yeah. We, we'll set you free. We won't make you. We won't keep you captive. Yeah, we we have room for a couple more questions. So. I'm gonna press yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Do you have any advice for anyone trying to get into the voice actor? Oh, I remember, I remember sure, yeah. you. Yeah, he, he oh, was, you have a nice really voice. About it. Um, so here's my feeling. I don't give great advice, but I will tell you who does, if you want to write it down. Um, Steve Bloom. You guys know Steve Bloom? He has a Facebook page called Bloombox, B-L-U-M-V-O-X, and he teaches and does stuff, and he gives great advice. Uh, D. Bradley Baker has a website, yeah. you know this, called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com, or so you want to be, I don't remember, I think it's IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com, but if you look up D. Bradley Baker website, he'll give you great advice. Tara Platt and Yuri Lowenthal wrote a great book, Aaron Fitzgerald also wrote a book, um, because the, the truth is, is when I got into the industry 20 years ago, it was completely different, so my advice is not, won't help you. <laughs> Like, because I, I got discovered, I literally was at a local singing competition at the Y in New Jersey. That is how I got started in this. That is not helpful to any of you. I mean, unless you all go to the Y in New Jersey and want to enter a singing competition for teenagers, that is useless information. Uh, so yeah, I always send people to those guys. Uh, there's great, I mean, you can train with the best coaches over Skype now. Like, there's just so many... Uh, avenues that are open to you guys that were not to me. I had to live in New York or LA when I started. Uh, now that's not the case. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that my advice is to get advice from them. I know that's a little bit of a cop out, but and, and always my advice is take acting classes. It's more about that than your beautiful voice. 
even though it is that that will help. Um, but yeah, be an actor first and foremost, and and then start specializing. That's awesome. Best of luck. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. You ever like mess with people like voices and stuff? Like drive throughs. I need to start. Uh, well, I don't as I I don't as much as I should. There was a panel I did once a few years ago with Cassandra Morris. It was awesome. She's a good friend of mine. I don't know if you guys know her. She was in Persona Five. Um, <gasps> Morgana. And uh, yeah, she's the best. And uh, so we did a panel together called Cassandra and Tara Steal Your Cell Phones. And um, we made everyone put their cell phone in a bag when they walked in and turn off their code. And we texted and called random people in their phones. And I would just leave messages like, Baba Shah, Baba. <laughs> Baba Shah, Shah, Baba Shah. Baba Shah, Shah. Baba. Like, just like that. Like, to me, that's the most fun. Like, that was awesome. That was a good use of my skill. Um, <laughs> other than that, I don't really do it much, but I definitely should start. Like, when I travel sometimes, like, if I don't want to sound too American, <laughs> Maybe be British for a minute. Uh, depends how they feel about Americans in that place. Um, but yeah, I need. I mean, if you guys have ideas of how I can just mess with people, let me know because it would be more f fun. Now too, like we're not on the phone as much either. Like there's just I feel like we text and we email and we order food on online and like it's just not the same. Like I had a waiter once come up to my table and he was like. So in, using some accent, and I was like, oh, he's from whatever, and they came back, and he was American. I was like, wait, I, well, busted. <laughs> I was like, if you're going to do it, commit. But at least for my meal. Like, the length of my meal, commit. <laughs> so, well, I would commit. Anybody else? Pressing questions. Any you pressing want to step on my lemonade? <laughs> that would be weird, yeah. We've got time for one more question, if anyone wants to be the Amina, last. Amina, you have a question. I have a question? Hmm. I have a question. Okay. Wait, who's playing Pokemon Go? Oh. All right, Team Valor. Team Instinct. Oh, are we doing this? Team people, Rocket. People get intense. <laughs> oh, someone raised their hand uh, there. Wait, who's this, what did I miss? Team Mystic. Mystic. Uh, Mystic one. I think Mystic just I'm won. Team Valor. I'm Instinct. But I was close to Mystic. Are you guys all still, who's still playing? Is anyone still playing? Cool. I like hearing that. I, it's a good game. Fun fact, I had to stop because I was in law school at the time. <laughs> and yeah, that I, I was, I, mi I almost missed a class because I was <laughs> like, I'm serious. Because I was like, there's a, there's a pokey stop and I have to, <gasps> have to be here. And oh it was ridiculous. God. And my mom's like, no, 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 no. You cannot do this. This is you That's need to un terrible. so I uninstalled it, and it's still uninstalled because I graduated a year ago. It's pretty fresh. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, so that was insane. Yeah, if you failed law school because of Pokemon Go, you that know that the region problem. in your head with po Pokemon's yeah, a bit too it's much, too right? Overgrown. It's too much. Yeah. You had a question back there, yeah? Mokuba only says one thing, and it's this: Help, Big Brother, help! <laughs> right? I mean, that's pretty much the show. They kidnapped me. I need my big brother to bring the Kaiba Corp jet. <laughs> that's awesome. That was pretty much it. I was glad. I, went, I got to go back uh, for Yu Gi Oh! and do the Dark Side of Dimensions movie, which was really cool for me. To, like, it was like being with an old friend uh, after many, many years. Uh, and Mokuba, not once in that movie did he say help or big brother. Just saying, he's really grown. If he gets any older, I won't be able to voice him anymore. So let's hope that doesn't happen. That's, yeah, that was it. Actually, oh, go ahead. Were you still going? No, he's okay, like, appreciate it. Oh, good, 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 okay. Um, I thought I was going crazy and I was hearing voices, so thank you for clarifying that. Um, I do actually have one question for you. Yes, ma'am. And if I asked this before, I apologize. I've, I've been doing so yeah, much yeah, today yeah, that no, I forget. Okay. So, what Pokemon memory, um, I guess, what, what, what's your best Pokemon memory, whether it's like in the booth as, you know, in character or outside of the booth, just, just yeah. Pokemon, Poke, Pokemon related. We had some good parties back in the day. Uh, <laughs> we were young. We were much more fun then. Uh, you know, 
we didn't get to record together. So honestly, those those times of having whatever party it was, or of actually meeting everyone and seeing everyone because we we didn't get to record together, was really special. You know, like, oh wait, did you do? Was that you in that episode who was playing this? Because oh, what, right, that was really good because I I was playing this character and I had this great conversation mm -hmm. with you. And, and often we just didn't know. So those social moments were very meaning, were even more meaningful than maybe they would have been. Because we all felt, I mean, I, I was talking, I had dinner with Megan and Rachel last night. And to have been a part of this cultural phenomenon is something that very, there's only a few of us that, that lived through that. And we have this very, like we see each other and even though we don't, talk all the time it's like no time is lost because we have this really crazy shared experience so my favorite memories are the, are the like socializing and being with Veronica's daughter and you know yeah. watching people grow up and have families and there's just so much that's happened in the 20 years it's bizarre it's so great that you guys are, you guys are actually friends we like each other yeah in real yeah, life which it, is which is very awesome. lucky it's lucky yeah it doesn't happen all the time <laughs> and often I don't meet everybody. I mean, luckily, Four Kids was a very special time in history where it, it was like an anime factory there, and also new animation. Um, you know, being there, suddenly then someone would think of you for something else, and there, was, there were multiple just projects going on everywhere. It was such a creative, lovely place to work. So I, I can't think of anything equivalent to that right now. I, it was a moment in time that I don't think will be duplicated, and it got kids into anime who never, never, ever would have known what anime was. So, you know, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! were these, like, gateway animes for them. And then they could decide if they wanted to delve deeper, but I didn't watch anime as a kid. I, it didn't even cross my mind to check it out. So I like that some kids accidentally got introduced to it. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, so thank you, Pokemon. Nostalgia, man. This mm -hmm. was so good. All right, so we're going to close out the panel. Um, By singing the Pokemon theme song. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want to be the very... No, I'm just kidding. I'm that to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. He that was pretty good. Was it? Yeah, that was no, pretty good. No, 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 no. Um, I'll be at my table if you guys want to yeah, come hang out. Yeah, please stop by. Just Thank you so much. No pressure. You just hang out with me. All right. Thank <laughs> you so much, Sarah. Cheers. From Karen's Creamery to you. <laughs> <laughs>